Name, Madeleine Robin, called Roxanne, refined, intellectual, no. unmarried, yes. orphan, distant cousin to Cyrano, whom we spoke just now. The man. Who's the man? Oh, that man. De Guiche, a count. In love with her, but already married to the niece of Cardinal Richelieu. So he has devised for Roxanne a marriage of convenience. His convenience to a fellow named Valver. Now, Valver is an accommodating man. He'll be a sort of part-time husband who will step discreetly aside whenever de Guiche wants to exercise his authority, shall we say. Roxanne says no to all of this, but de Guiche is persistent and powerful. Mm. I've written a little song about his game. A naughty little song. Make him furious. I'll sing it for you. Listen. Wait. Someone is looking at you. Roxanne. Then I'll be leaving for some place where my singing is appreciated. Also, I'm thirsty. No sign of Cyrano anywhere. Wait, Le Bray, wait and see. This man de Guiche, what ostentation, hold and calculating, certain to succeed. Come, let us make our bow. We shall be none the worse for it, I assure you. <clears throat> Beautiful ribbons, Count. All Paris has heard of your triumphs against the Spaniards. Uh, shall we take our places? Come, Valver. Valver, my glove. I'll throw it in his face. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Quite a crush here tonight. We're practically in one another's pockets. I was looking for my glove. And you found a hand. No, no, don't turn me in. Let me go, and I'll tell you a secret. What secret? Your drunken poet friend, Linier, the one who was here just now. What about him? He's as good as dead. <laughs> yes, an ambush. One of his songs offended a very powerful man, and now 100 men will be waiting for him tonight. 100 men? Yes, and I should know I'm one of them. <laughs> Who's behind this? Uh, that is a professional secret. Well, where will they be? Uh, at the Port de Nail, uh, by the Harbour Bridge, on his way home. Now you warn him. Save his life. In the name of God, how will I find him? Make the rounds of the taverns. Leave a message in each one. A warning. God, what swine. A hundred men against poor little Inier. I must warn him. But how? How can I leave her here with him? I must... Save Linier. Cyrano is not here, then. Or tell me, sir, why are you staring at my nose? No. Does it I, astonish I, I, you? I, 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 you misunderstand. It disgusts me. you then. Dear sir. Does color I mean, nauseate you? Uh, by, by no means. Is it obscene? Well, not in the least. Or perhaps you find it just a trifle large. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, small. Very small. Minuscule, really. What? Minuscule, my nose? Oh, God. Magnificent, my nose. You pug, you knob, you button face. Know that I glory in this nose of mine. For a great nose indicates a great man, wise, courageous, virile, witty, proud, kind. All the virtues you so sadly lack. In truth, so vacuous is your countenance, I cannot distinguish it from your back. <laughs> this fellow grows tiresome. He's fond of blowing his trumpet. Will no one interfere? Observe. I myself will proceed to put him in his place. <laughs> Ah, sir, ah, uh, your, your nose is rather large. Yes? Yes? Is that all? Well, of course, sir. Oh, no, dear sir, why waste such an opportunity for eloquence? Consider all the things you might have said. For example, thus, aggressive. Sir, if that nose are mine, I'd have it amputated on the spot. <laughs> Kindly, oh. You love the little birds so much that when they come to sing, you give them this to perch upon. <laughs> Humorous, sir. <laughs> when you smoke, <laughs> the neighbors must suppose your chimney is on fire. <laughs> Cautious, careful when you turn your head, you might club me. <laughs> Pedantic, 
Does not Aristophanes mention a mythological monster called the hippo dragon ochem elephantos? Surely we have here the original. <laughs> Familiar, hey, do you mind if I hang my hat on it? Eloquent, when it blows, the typhoon howls. When it bleeds, the Red Sea. <laughs> Enterprising, stripe it, you've got a barber's pole. Inquisitive, what do they call this monument? Respectful, sir, I recognize in you a man of prominence. Rustic. What? You call that a nose? What kind of fool you think I be? That ain't no nose. That there's a new kind of bulb with cucumber. <laughs> Military, the enemy is charging. Fire your cannon. Practical, at least it keeps your feet dry in the rain. Or parodying Faustus in the play. Is this the nose that launched a thousand ships and matched the topless towers of Ilium? These, my dear sir, are things you might have said had you some tinge of letters or of wit to color your discourse. But wit not so, you never had an atom. And of letters, you need but three to write you down. A.S. S. Come, there, there. This elegance of a non-entity, a clown, who appears in public with no buckles on his shoes, no ribbons, or even a pair of gloves. I carry my adornments on my soul. I do not dress up like a popinjay. You have no gloves. Yes, I have no gloves. A pity, too. I had one, the last of an old pair. A certain nobleman offered me an impertinence. I left it in his face. Don't, bumpkin, fool, insolent puppy, jabonol. Oh, yes, and I, Cyrano Savignon, Hercule de Bergerac. Good day. <laughs> you are a fake. Ooh, what's the matter? Ooh, I must do something to relieve this stitch in my side. Ah, so be it. You shall fall exquisitely. Poet. Huh. Correct at last, a poet. So while we fence, I will make you a ballade, extempore. A ballad? Yes, you know what the ballad is. I... The ballad, sir, consists of three eight-line stanzas with the refrain of four lines at the end. Oh, come. I will make one while we fight. And at the end of the refrain, thrust home. You will? I will. Ballad of the duel at the Hotel de Bourgogne. 